Welcome to In The Workshop with Mark Tunley. It is late November 23 and we're going to have a chat about the various types of rigs I use with the Specialist Multi-Tip. Let's have a closer look. Now, I've just got them laid out here and you can see inline lead and inline feeder, what I call a pendulum lead and pendulum feeder, and this one which with this unit here becomes a helicopter. So to cover again, inline, pendulum, and helicopter. These are the three main sort of uh, feeders and lead systems I use in specialist fishing with the multi-tip rod, which is down here, this is 13.6. And I've only got the specialist tip on, but I've got the, the quivers here. And these are the components, if we have a closer look, these are the components that will pretty much make all of these rigs work, and that's them. There's only one additional, which is this bungee rig, which I use for the helicopter, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So, first thing I do is I put up a little grip stop on the line. Now that can stay on there permanently, and I use the small ones so they can actually go through the eyes of the quivers. They actually do poke all the way through. So when I need to swap over the various tips for how I'm going to decide to fish, then that pops through nice and simple. So that goes on. And so I'll start off with an inline, all right? And I'll choose the feeder instead of the lead. Okay, now, first thing I'm going to do is take one of these two swivels, sorry, sorry, beads, one of these two beads, and find the hole and pop it on. Okay, done. Then the inline. Now the beautiful thing about this system with these components is all of them, just depending on where you fit them on the line, work with all the various setups. So, that's on there, let's just squeeze, pop that towel rubber back on, okay. A bead at the front. And then the buffer bead. Now I use a buffer bead because when I tie on the quick change swivel, which I'm going to do now, Now, when I've tied on the quick change swivel, it disappears inside, nicely inside. And my rig's going to go on there with the various tail rubber on it. I'm just going to get a little tool out to pull it back out. And the reason why I leave the bead on that side is under pressure, the little black bead stops the swivel pulling out completely. So set up, fully set up, you just slide it all down and that's it. In line, rig on the end, safety, so if the line snaps it can all pull off, and bolt rig, which is basically all of my rigs uh, are bolt rig. I haven't done any running rigs for years. Now I know a lot of people do and they like to fish very light leads uh, with quiver tips and strike at every bit of weed that knocks on their line or every bit of tail that touches their line. And I can't stand it from a personal viewpoint. I hate watching my tip move and striking into nothing because it's just weed or something. I'm just a bolt rig boy. And if it's on, it's on. If it's not, it's not. And it's as simple as that. And I've been doing that for so many years. I don't even know how to do running rigs anymore. So we'll have a closer look again. Bolt rigs all the way for Tunley. So that's the inline. Now, the inline, be it the lead or the feeder, I use on the river or the lake. And so it can be on both. If I'm using the inline on the river, I use it down the edge. So I've got them from one ounce right the way up to fours and, and beyond. And so if I'm fishing downstream and relatively close in, I like to use the inline. I can use them across if it's, and downstream if it's not too much of a heavy flow, but basically I use inlines on the river downstream. Uh, very effective, back the clutch off, whack, everyone's a lollipop. 
on the lakes I use inlines all the time as long as I can cast the range. They're not the most aerodynamic and depending on you know circumstances wind you might tap out at 50 60 yards and then you move on to the helicopter which we'll discuss later. So inlines for downstream river and on the lakes nearly all the time as long as I can get away with it. Let's have another closer look. So that's that one and we're going to swap him over now to the pendulum and I'll tie on this this pendulum feeder and then talk about where I use that. So slide up the grip stop, bead, I'm going to take off the swivel, sorry not a swivel, it's a quick change swivel and that's what I use to, to hook on my rig and then cover it with a little sleeve. So components off, and the grip stop stays on, just stays on all the time, it's always there. So then let's do the pendulum, okay, bead, probably didn't need to take it off because it was already on, but just to show you, bead on, feeder, bead, buffer bead, going quite quick aren't I? And then tie on the, the, okay. Now I didn't put any wet on that because it's only for demos. Trim it up. Right now let's slide it all down so it's all in position. Again, that, that little bead there stops the swivel pulling out under tension. Down she goes, down she all goes into position. And that is your pendulum. And the nice thing about it is when it's under tension being cast, look how it kicks out. And when I've got a tail rubber on and the hook link, the whole thing stands off sort of paternoster style. So it's quite clever. Right. So, so that's the pendulum style. I don't use them on still waters at all. I only use the pendulum on rivers and it's for across or upstream and the reason why I do that is when it's actually in situ on the deck it's how it acts so that's why I use them I don't ever use them downstream just across upstream if it's downstream it's a uh, inline right back up to this so if you can imagine out this is gone and it's hit the deck and what we've got is we've got water pressure on the line so it will turn the feeder around from the water pressure because we've cast this upstream with the usual bower line system. And then the hook link comes out from here and will run down downstream as well. So I like to use a good, depending on the flow and depending on where I am, between two feet and upwards, and something like three feet most of the time. So then when this is under tension, this is digging into the bottom and the tip is bent round by the water pressure on the line. When you actually get a take and it's self-hooking, water flow going that way, remember, it dislodges the lead. And as you can see, the, the line goes loose. Dislodges the lead, line goes loose, and the quiver tip springs back. Just goes dung, 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 and springs back. So that's how I use those. Always on running water pendulums, okay? Now let's do a swap over now to the helicopter. Right, I'm just going to dismantle this again and it uses the same components all the way through. Just get this little tool to dig that guy out. Just going to push the grip stop up. And it is a clever system because no matter what I've got left on the rod from the day previous, the time that I went previously, I'll take them all off and line them up again here. Okay, I've got them all in a pocket. Um, uh, this is one of the large pockets and I use the large pocket because I will keep loads of other things in there. There'll be loads of feeders that I'll be potentially using and bits and bobs. I need to stuff them in there and all clips on the rod and no matter what I'm doing, I've got them. So, so that was the pendulum, again with lead or feeder across stream or upstream. And then if I can pick this up, let's pull up a bit of line off. Let's look at the helicopter setup. Same components. Now with the helicopter, the rig 
is separate from the line. So again, bead on. Do, 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 find the eye, there it is. Bead on, now, the quick change swivel. Oops, dropped it. Come back, come back, there you are. Then the other bead. Then the buffer bead. And then this is the only additional piece that you need, that I need in any case. And these are those bungees that I make up with power gum, as it used to be called, bungee rigs, a normal swivel, blah, blah, blah. And then tie that on. And let's slide that down. So the whole lot gets slid down. Okay. That's the helicopter part with my tail rubber and rig on, those short four inch lake jobs. And then I can clip on whichever feeder I like. And I personally like these for out to like 60 yards, depending on what you can get. These are only go up to 40 grams, so I can get them probably 60 yards. But these ones, this is a two ounce, uh, the windows, XL size, uh, Preston Innovation jobs, they'll go bloody miles. It's just like casting a two ounce lead. So I clip that on. Go on. Here you go. And that is, let's get rid of those. And that's the helicopter setup. Okay. You can see there's the bungee part. That is there for shock absorbing head shakes. So when you've actually got fish on here, if you come up to me, if you've actually got fish on here, and shaking away, you're playing the fish, you've got this pendulum helicopter rig hanging underneath, and I like to have a little bit of that, so if there's a direct head shake, it cushions it, just works superbly, reduces the chances of being able to throw a hook or hook pull. So that's it, back down here and have a look. Um, so that is the only additional part that's needed on the helicopter, and I use those exclusively on still waters at range. When the inline feeder has run out of juice and I can't get it any further, then I use these bad boys to go to maximum range. It's my least favourite because of the awkward, and I use like a four inch hook link so it can't get tangled up, and it's my least favourite because of the angle at which it's playing the fish and this thing's hanging underneath. I love an inline because the inline can slide all the way up the, the line when playing the fish and it's just, that's how I do it. So, basically, those are the components. A grip stop, two beads, a quick chain swivel, a buffer, and you're done, apart from your bungee rig if you want it. And you can fish on the Mark Tunley Mark One multi-tip or any other rod that you choose, obviously, like that. That's how I do it. All that lot goes into a, a pocket and strapped on the rod. And wherever I go, wherever I go, if I'm down the river, down the lake, I just grab out what I need from the boxes or from the bags and can chop and change very, very quickly. So I might be, say for instance, I might be on the river, sorry, on the lake, fishing a close range line at say 15 or 20 yards and I've also got a long range line set up and I've pre-baited it at maybe 80 yards. And then this one dries up for a little while at 20 yards. And then I quickly swap over the rig, it takes me two minutes to change over and I'm out bang to the, to the long range one. So that in essence is um, the rigs, well not the rigs, the lead and feeder setups I use on the multi-tip for the vast majority of my feeder fishing now. Uh, and lead fishing, and it seems to suit me well. Cheers.